Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I'm doing good. Today we are going to be reviewing some notes from reporters about the second day of testimony and the Brent Christensen penalty phase trial. As you know, as I know, as we all know, we saw it coming. He was found guilty. So now it is a matter of life or death basically for him. This testimony was expensive especially heart-wrenching. I was just like, honestly, a hot mess here this morning reading this stuff. So I'm gonna try and make it through this video uh, without anything else being said and without any further ado, let's review. As I said before, this is the penalty phase of the Brent Christensen trial. The victim in this case was Ying Ying Zhang. And Tuesday, we heard from a lot of heard the people closest to her. And her father was up there. And when he was shown a photo on the big like monitor screen and asked if that was the the picture that he saw last of his daughter he broke down he started crying and through a translator he said it's completely unbearable to tell you the truth i do not know how to live the remainder of my life uh now her younger brother was also up there and he stated that his sister always took care of him even after she went to college she was like helping him find a job and doing all this stuff you know, so she was a huge influence to him. And he said, what Ying Ying is to me, she is a sister, she is a friend, and she's also a teacher, he said. Since I lost her, I feel lost because I can no longer have my teacher to guide me. I mean, oh my gosh, y'all, I have goosebumps. My beard is like standing on end. I mean, this girl touched her family. I mean, she was there rock you know this girl was going places and i i just it just makes the horror of it even worse prosecutors played a video interview with the mother she was not in the courtroom during this time <clears throat> they translated it into english and actually christians christensen sat there with his head bowed eyes closed and he appeared to be crying <clears throat> if those were crocodile tears we don't know but there was one reporter that said he did wipe tears away so now, in this interview, she said that she doesn't know how to carry on with her daughter. Uh, she says, this wonderful daughter of mine, she is my everything. Uh, she cried during the interview. She recounted how she hoped for her daughter to have a family of her own. Uh, she said, I also so much wanted to see her in a wedding dress. She wanted to be a grandmother. She had very high hopes for this girl, and most of them, I mean, she was definitely achieving these things. Now, <clears throat> as this recorded interview was playing, a juror up and abruptly ran out of the courtroom, <clears throat> pardon me, and the judge basically immediately called for a recess, and the juror was basically losing it and crying. And the defense attorney, uh, Elizabeth Pollack, said she had serious concerns about the juror's ability to be fair and impartial. Uh, and she said, this is the first time I've ever seen a juror get up and run out of the courtroom because she couldn't contain her emotions. <clears throat> I'll say something about that in a minute. Uh, now, the juror met with the judge and lawyers from each side and in the chambers, like, privately. And the judge said that the juror gave satisfactory answers related to impartiality, and the testimony continued. This case, and now y'all know that we haven't really even watched this in, in person because of the, you know, it's a federal case. So... Even reading about the heinousness of it, it's so horrible. I mean, it, it's just because this girl was so innocent and just such a wonderful human being. And this guy was so evil, is so evil. And so when you see the, that balance, not the balance, but the contrast, it's, it's just heart-wrenching. And to see what he has put her family through, I mean, this has literally destroyed this family and he seems to continue to get pleasure out of that so this whole crying bit i'm like sorry i mean i don't know what that's about if you're crying because you got caught i also think there's another level to these and for me and i don't know about y'all let me know in the comments <clears throat> when a verdict has come in even when it's plain as day with this, I mean, the defense basically said, we know he's guilty. We know you're going to find him guilty. Let's get to the penalty phase. Once that is off the table, and usually after we've gotten to that point, the details have all gone away. It's almost like an emotional 
rush is left and you're just like oh my god it's real now and so the true there's no concern of not guilty guilty what version of guilty it's it's finished you know he's guilty so now the penalty phase is there and while there's still tension for that for me there's just a relief almost like ugh, okay you know we we got that far and you can actually start to digest the true horror of the situation and so I, I mean I don't know so for me this morning like I said reading this stuff I mean I was just a mess I had to pull myself together to sit here and, and put this up so anyways let's continue now her fiance <clears throat> and I'm I'm gonna butcher his name so I'm just gonna say her fiance uh, they planned to marry in October 2017 and eventually planned to return to China because she wanted to teach at a university and he said it totally changed the track of my life. Uh, he said her parents have struggled to eat and sleep, and they're especially troubled over not being able to bring her home for an honorable burial. Uh, because, you know, her body hasn't been found. It's probably never going to be found. So, and he said, quote, this is quoted, Ying Ying for them was their prize star, their hope, their future, their everything. And now they've lost everything. And I mean, I, I do think that I think that they put a lot of weight into this young lady because I think she was going to basically be able to carry the family. Uh, she was she, they, they were farmers from a farming community, is my understanding. So for this girl to get to be accomplishing the things that she is at her age, I mean, this was major. So now the fiance continued on his testimony, and then he referred to Christensen as a criminal and said what he did to Zong was too painful for a young girl, which led to an immediate objection by the defense and a call for a mistrial, citing improper victim impact testimony. And the judge swiftly denied that request, but he did strike the fiance's statement and instructed jurors that they can't consider any of the witnesses' opinions on Christensen himself, his crime, or his appropriate punishment. So you're not allowed to like do stuff like that during this phase of the trial. So can you imagine if they had done a mistrial? I mean, my God. Uh, now, prosecutors also played phone calls between Christensen and his parents and ex-wife that were recorded while he was in jail. And during one talk with his mother, Christensen speculated that Zong was probably a sex slave somewhere. I mean, can you, I mean, honestly, now he didn't say this during the penalty phase, obviously it's a recording, but this family, I hope that they didn't translate that for the ones that don't speak English, because who wants to hear that? And how could you even say, oh, she's probably a sex slave somewhere. I mean, really, like, it just, it boggles my mind, y'all. Boggles my mind. Now, the prosecution is expected to formally rest their case in the sentencing phase Wednesday morning. So, at the time of this filming, they might have already finished that. Uh, and then Christensen's defense attorneys are expected to call his father, Michael Christensen, as their first witness on Wednesday. Y'all, I mean, if there is a reason, I want to get a ticket up there and just hang out and just pray I can catch, like, overhear something in that room. I cannot wait to hear what his father has to say. Because, again, I'm very fascinated. I swear I'm going to do a video on this eventually, I promise, uh, about the relationship of when a loved one, a family, a close friend, whatever, goes through a situation like this and how they choose to relate to that person. So... I don't know what he's going to get up there and say. I'm imagining he's, you know, getting up there because it's for the defense to try and save his son's life. Um, I would love to hear what his parents had to say. Like, what is their stance on this, on the evilness that has taken place with him? So, you know, the jury, I mean, you've got jurors running out of the room crying. You know, it's not looking good. I mean, this is just horrible. And I hope that his family can somehow recover from that. I mean, they'll never be able to recover from it, but that they can somehow find healing to move on with life because right now their entire world is just crumbled. I mean, it's just, it's, it's nothing. And it's been a horrible two years on them. And I don't think that's going to end until there's some closure to this. And the fact that they're, the whole aspect that he has made it so they can't give her an honorable burial. I mean, it's just disgusting. And that he's kind of held that out. Now it would be very interesting. I mean, he didn't take the stand. He's not going to take the stand. I can't imagine he would. If he might, and y'all, if he does, I, I don't even know what to say about that, y'all. Shut it down. I don't even know what to say about it. Because there was speculation that he might take the stand or last minute say where the body is or something like that to try and save his life. But I don't think that's 
at number one possible, and I don't think it's probably gonna happen. Hopefully, so if they're doing that Wednesday, usually the way this works is Wednesday night or early in the morning, but with this, I'm sure they'll put it out tonight. Uh, they're gonna put out the, um, you know, this is what's going on for today's testimony. And I mean, I don't think it's gonna take the jurors that long, y'all. I mean, how, my God. Again, death penalty stuff is very tricky because one juror might feel like they might have a bias towards that. But when you start getting into mitigating factors, I mean, he, he presents all of these things or aggravating factors, whatever they call it for the death penalty. I'm not sure what criteria those are for like where they're at or how that works, you know, with their particular things. But I mean, I just know that, I mean, this was, you know, unusual torture and punishment. I mean, he tortured the girl. I mean, the, the, if he killed her the way that he claims. So it'll be very interesting to see. Anyways, so that's the tea on this. And my... Everything goes out to this family. I just, I, I just can't even. I'm heartbroken for them. You know, the mother and the family's sorrow. It's just, a, it's a universal language that speaks to us all. I think on some level, and I just, I, I absolutely hate this for them. I absolutely hate this for them. So. Anyways, I hope that y'all have a good day. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. We might have a verdict. We might not. I don't know. Uh, but we will follow it no matter what. Uh, be sure to check out the description below. There's a lot of uh, links down there for like social media, uh, new podcast, uh, things of that nature, ways to contact me. Don't forget to click the bell if you want to know when my new videos are released. And other than that, I shall talk to you soon. Goodbye.